Welcome to our uh, study in the Word of God, and uh, I'm really happy to uh, have the privilege of presenting this uh, study today, and uh, I pray that all of us may benefit, and let us pray while we're studying in our hearts that the Holy Spirit will come and that we will understand the Word. And the key text in this study is based on Romans chapter 8, verse 9. It says that, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That's why our topic is the Spirit of Christ. So, what and where is the Spirit of Christ in time past? We read in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what, that is in the Scriptures, or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. So here we know that the Spirit of Christ was in the prophets who wrote the Scriptures. So if we don't have the Spirit of Christ, we don't belong to Him. That is why we're emphasizing here that the Spirit of Christ is important. So, who was actually in the prophets? In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21, we read, For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God, those were the prophets, spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, the Spirit of Christ was actually the Holy Ghost. That was in the, in the prophets. So we hear, uh, how about us? The question is in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 19, and 20. Ask. And it starts with what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you? What is the Holy Ghost? The Spirit of Christ which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. Don't you know that you are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. What's the price that we are bought for? The blood of Jesus on the cross. Therefore, because of that, we must glorify God in our body and in your spirit, which are God's. So we don't glorify God only in the body, but also the spirit. So do we have the spirit of Christ? That is the question. In John 14, 26, and then uh, 16 and 17, and then chapter 16, verse 13, we read these words about Jesus. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, what's the other name for uh, the Holy Ghost? Aside from the Spirit of Christ, the Comforter, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. And verse 16. And I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Who is that comforter? Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not neither knoweth him. But ye know him. For he that dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So what is it? It is the spirit of truth. And Jesus said, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, and he will show you things to come. And what is the benefit of the truth? In chapter 17, verse 17 of John, we read, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. That's why we know that the comforter, which is the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Ghost, it's the Spirit of Christ. So what is sanctification? Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. What is it? 
And here is uh, what we read in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3, 4, and 5. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. What is sanctification? It is the will of God that we're sanctified. What is it? That ye should abstain from fornication. Why fornication? Okay, this, is a, this is a big topic. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel, vessel, the body, in sanctification and honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. So here is a contrast within, with, with the Gentiles which know not God. And for us, who are no longer Gentiles, but uh, the will of God is sanctification. Who are the Gentiles anyway? What are the Gentiles? In Ephesians 2.11 and 12 and 13, uh, it's reminding us, the Christians who now accepted Jesus, it's, he says, Wherefore, remember, that being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, you, you were, remember, you, you were in the past Gentiles, okay, in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time, the Gentiles, when you were Gentiles at that time, ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. That was when you were Gentiles, okay? But now... In Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes were afar off are ma made nigh, made, means connected by the blood of Christ. So now, the will of God for us, not like the Gentiles, abstain from fornication. What is it? Sanctification. That is sanctification. And the Gentiles have no God. We do. Okay. So who may the, these people be? Who may be these Gentiles, you know, that God is talking about without, they do not do the will of God. So if we don't do the will of God, we are Gentiles no matter what we profess, okay? Jesus tell, will tell these people in Matthew 7, 23, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Why? Because the Gentiles know not God, and God does not know them. They do not have the spirit of Christ. Okay? So this is very important. And we'll read the text now in Matthew 7 from verse 21. We read verse 23. And here is the emphasis. Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, or Jesus, Jesus, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Who will enter? But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So what's the will of God? Sanctification. Many will say today, to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In the name of Jesus, you know. Prophesy this. What else? And in thy name have cast out devils. Imagine that. By the name of Jesus, they cast out devils. Remember, they do not do the will of God, but they use the name of Jesus. They use the name of, of, uh, of Christ. And in thy name done many wonderful works, like miracles of healing and uh, many wonderful uh, miracles that they are doing in the name of Jesus. But remember... These people, do not, they do not do the will of God. What is it? Sanctification. They don't have the Spirit of Christ. What will Jesus say to them? We read it already in verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So iniquity is doing things for the Lord in the name of God, even casting out devils, if we do not do the will of God. And we cannot do the will of God if we do not have the spirit of Christ. That's why it's important for us to do it. 
In 1 Peter 1, 16, 15, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. What's the will of God? Be holy, because He is holy. But as He which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Conversation has to do with speakings. Uh, and we will dwell with that more uh, shortly. In chapter 2 of First Peter, verse 21 to 23, we read, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us. Now, if we have the sp Spirit of Christ, uh, let us try to identify what does that mean to have the Spirit of Christ. Here is the Spirit of Christ manifested in these verses. Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. What are those steps? Who did no sin. What is sin? Transgression of the law. And you know, fornication, which is a uh, lot today, is violation of what law in the Ten Commandments? The seventh. You know, it's, uh, this is a big problem. The Gentiles do that. Look at the world inundated today with pornography, you know, and all of this. And, and, uh, and all, everything is uh, with sex. The, you know, our fornication. Violation of that. That is the world. That's the Gentiles. They don't, they don't know God. No, how, no matter how they try to, do the, to serve the Lord, naming the Lord, praising the name of Jesus. But if they don't do this part, I tell you, they do not have the Spirit of God in them. To be holy... Uh, to be like Jesus, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. And this is the Spirit of Christ. Verse 23. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. Okay, what does that mean? When he suffered, he threatened not. What does that mean? That's the Spirit of Christ. But committed himself to him that judges righteously. And who is that? God the Father. So no matter how he suffered here on earth, he did not retaliate. And this is what we need to have if we have the Spirit of Christ in us. So what is the advantage of suffering? What is the lesson that we learn from suffering? Okay, because he suffered. And here is what we read in Hebrews 5, 8. Though he were a son, and the son here is S-O-N, talking about Jesus, he was the son of God. Okay? Though he were the son of God, and he was also a son of man, okay? yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. What did he learn? What lesson was learned by Jesus in his suffering? Obedience. So if we have the Spirit of Christ, we will also learn obedience. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So, what did Christ do? He perfected that character. He was, he, by obeying. So obedience actually is a big subject, it's a big principle that we need to learn. You know, in the time of uh, King Saul, when he was chosen king, we read here in 1 Samuel 15, 22, 23. God told him, kill all the Amalekites. Limnan. And you know what? Of the Philistines, okay? So he did, but he did not complete. He did not obey all. He did only partial obedience. And then when uh, the prophet Samuel told him, he said, you know what? Uh, I did this. Oh, what is this uh, cows and all this? Oh, no, I, this is offering to the Lord. See, he, he had his own way of obeying. And you know what... Uh, the prophet said through the Spirit of the Lord, and Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? 
as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Don't you know that obedience is more important than offering sacrifice? It says here, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice. That is obedience. It's important than giving offerings, you know. And to hearken, to hear, than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he also had rejected thee from being king. And we know that that was how David was chosen. What was the root of that? Because he did not learn how to obey. Obedience. Jesus, if we have the spirit of Christ, we should learn how to obey. All, not partial. And here is a message for you and for me. And you know, when I was uh, studying this myself, you know, I felt convicted because I saw myself uh, lacking. I saw myself short. So I plead with the Lord, please, Lord, Take away this rebellion in my heart. Take away the stubbornness. Because we don't want to obey. When we don't want to obey, you know, we're stubborn. We're rebellious. And I plead to all of us listening today. And this message is not only for me giving the message. It's from God. It's for you and for me. So let's have the spirit of Christ. He learned how to obey. You know? And here, the, to obey, we have to be willing to suffer in order to obey. Because Christ suffered. When he suffered, then he learned the importance of obedience. So, how should we be? You know, this is the spirit of Christ this, in Desire of Ages, page 89. We read, and here is very uh, important principle. Jesus did not contend for his rights. If we have the spirit of Christ, we should be like him. We should not contend for my right, your right, you know. This is my right. Okay, that's not the spirit of Jesus. Often, his work was made unnecessarily severe, unnecessarily severe, because he was willing and uncomplaining. Yet, he did not fail nor become discouraged. He did not retaliate when roughly used, but bore, bore insult Patiently. You know, I don't want to be uh, uh, with the feelings here, but I cannot help uh, remembering myself. I cannot bear insult. I retaliate right away. You know, I'm this. Shows me. I still don't have the spirit of Christ. And I believe this topic, you know, this subject, the, to have the spirit of Christ. When we look unto Jesus, uh, we behold his character. Because we know we believe in the sealing message. When will Jesus Christ come? According to the spirit of prophecy, Christ's object lesson, page 69. We read it over and over again. Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. And we claim to be that church. All of us claim to be that church. And then it says like this. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. 
character of Christ. And how can we have the character of Christ if we don't have the spirit of Christ? That is why this message is very important. It is a message of salvation for you and for me. I hope and I appeal to everyone listening to this message. Let us open our hearts to Jesus. And let us be willing. I could see he was willing, even if the, the job was unnecessarily hard, he was not complaining. Why? He was willing. His heart was in it. That is the spirit I must have, we should have. When we are willing to suffer, we are willing to obey. And patience, you know. We will learn to be patient. You know what did he do? We read in Desire of Ages 762. It says, But Christ, coming to earth as a man, lived a holy life, and what did he do? And developed a perfect character. That is the purpose why he lived, to give us an example. He learned obedience and being made perfect. What, the, what does that mean? He was already holy. He was the son of God. He was the son of man. Not, no sin was in him. He took our nature, sinless nature, sinful nature, Romans 8, 3. And then, as a man, he gave an example. He developed a perfect character. So here is what we need to be like Jesus. We should have our, to, uh, to do a perfection of character. What is another word for character? Character, it may not be directly uh, synonym or associated uh, in the Bible. It's, uh, you know, character is the, uh, what the person is. Okay, and it's, it's deeper than that. But in the Bible, let us read verses in the Bible. In James 2, 20, 21 and 22. O oh, will thou know, O oh, vain man, that faith without works is dead? Works, faith. Okay. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? And we read this in Genesis chapter 22. You know the story. How Jesus, uh, actually it was uh, Jesus uh, who commanded Abraham, you know, and uh, offer me now, you know, your Isaac, your son, whom thou lovest, he said. And Abraham, you know, Abraham was obedient to the voice. These, Abraham is, he is uh, obedient, you know, that's why he, he trained his household. He, Abraham has a big household, over a thousand souls. And and God knows uh, about Abraham. We read in, uh, in other parts of the Bible. I know him. For he will command his household after him to obey the way of the Lord. So, and because Abraham was that, this was the test. This was a proof in this instance when God told him, offer Isaac. And so three days he was going to the mountain. He did not even wake up Sarah, his wife. Because he knew that if he did, she might be, you know, overwhelmed by, oh, no, no, my son. She, she might be a hindrance to fulfilling, to obey the Lord. See? So that works. All heaven were looking. Heaven and earth, you know. The devil, Satan, and the holy angels, they were watching what was happening. And, you know, if you read this in the book of Patriarchs and Prophets, the devil was constantly uh, putting in the ears of Abraham, you know, maybe you are, you are delusion, maybe that was the voice of God. Thou shalt not kill, you know. You have to obey the commandments. 
Maybe you were, you were misled. But Abraham knew the voice of God. You know. So, he was tempted to, to even uh, doubt. But on the third day, he saw there the mountain. And he knew that God was real. So, you know the story. You know, when the, he had the servants... And then uh, they were going up the mountain. He said to the servants, Tarry here, wait here. I and my son will offer there. You know? And he did not even say to Isaac at that time. And Isaac was obedient too. He was trained how to obey. No complaining, obey. This was the lesson that King Saul did not learn. Okay, okay obey. And then when they were coming up, and then the lad, Isaac, was thinking, you know, when we offer, we need a, a lamb. He said, Father, here is the wood and the fire. Where is the lamb? Oh, so. And that was a good question. You know, what was in the mind of Abraham, if you read it in the Bible? By faith, he did it. He was saying to himself, you know what, if I obey the Lord, this son, Isaac, was a son of a miracle. You know? He should not have been born because my wife was already old. But God told him, remember in that, uh, uh, when the, the three came and, oh, next year you, your wife, and Sarah heard it, she laughed, I'm too old, you know? And then, don't laugh, you know, because. And so she did. The year exactly as the Lord told, told them, told to Abraham, she conceived. And this was Isaac. He was the son of a miracle. And so he was thinking, you know, you know, if I will offer him, the Lord will raise him from the dead. That's how Abraham thought, by faith. He trusted in God. Okay? And that was the spirit of Christ. So when... when uh, he said, God will provide. Don't worry, my son. God will provide. And he didn't know. But he knew that God wanted him to offer Isaac. So when they reached the place, he told him. And you know, Isaac was big, was strong. And Abraham was old. He could have said, oh, no, 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 daddy. And he could have run away. But you know what happened? Because he had the spirit of Christ as well. He shared. He said, oh God, oh dad, okay father, come on, buy me. He volunteered himself. And that spirit is lacking today among our young people. And this is what I uh, am asking the Lord. Lord, give us the spirit of Christ like manifested. And of course, we know when the, the, the altar was set up and Isaac was there and Isaac was willing to die and the knife was there and what did God do? You know the story. And, and of course, in the stead of Isaac, there was a ram. That was Jesus. Symbolized by that ram. He, and then uh, Abraham understood the gospel. That was John 3.16. You read in Galatians chapter 3, 8, 9, you know, the gospel was preached to Abraham. There, that was the time the covenant was confirmed. I now I know, he said, because thou hast done this to me. And now, under that Abrahamic covenant, we all are saved, even today. The Abrahamic covenant. And you know, the spirit of Christ was manifested. And so, works. That was the works we're talking here. And what was that? Faith. Wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father, justified by works, when we had offered Isaac his son upon the altar, seest thou how faith wrought by his works 
and by works was made, faith made perfect. So what is that? Character. Another word for character is faith. If we have the faith of Jesus, it should be perfected by works. What is works? Obedience. And that's why we have to understand that works, if we have the Spirit of Christ, here is what we read in uh, Romans 3, 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? Don't we obey? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. No. And here, in Steps to Christ, page 62. working. Sorry, we have uh, some kind of interruption here. But uh, let us uh, backtrack a little bit. Here, uh, do we make void the law through faith? If we have faith, faith without works is dead. God says, God forbid, yea, we establish the law, obedience. Here is a statement I gathered from Steps to Christ, page 62. It was possible for Adam before the fall, before Adam committed sin. He was in a sinless state. He was in the image of God. It was possible at that time for Adam to form a righteous character. That means to build character. How? By obedience to God's law. So, the works here, obedience, that's how we develop character. To perfect our faith is to perfect our character by obedience. That's why if we have the Spirit of Christ, we will learn obedience as he did. Like Abraham, like Isaac, like all the prophets. Why? They had faith. Whose faith is that? Faith of Jesus. So, works means action. When you repeat action, what happens to that action? It forms, becomes a habit. So, and what, ha what is habit? It forms what? Character. That is how it works. We have to understand how deep and broad this principle is. The Bible, faith without works is dead. What's the works? Works of faith? Obedience. And that's how are we perfect character. Jesus did that to us. That's why we read in Education, page 225, character building is the most important work ever entrusted to human beings. What is the most important work God has given to you and to us, to me, all of us, if we're human beings? Character building. What character is it? The character of Christ. And how should we have it? If we have the spirit of Christ. That's why the promise of Jesus when he was here on earth in John 14. One, two, three. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. That means you believe in the Father. Believe also in me. So if we believe in the Father, we have to believe in Jesus. What did he say? In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. So there are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. That's the promise. That means he will build mansions for you and me. That's the purpose of why he went. He's there right now. Building mansions. And if I go and prepare a place for you, what, did he, what will he do? What did he promise? I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. We will not separate anymore. Wherever I go, there you'll be. 
But right now, I, you cannot go there. I go there. I leave you here. Okay? So he told his people to wait because he was building mansions for them. Them is us. So the question is this. Here is a statement, brethren. Desire of Ages 663. He was going to prepare a place for them that he might come again and receive them unto himself. Oh, here is the important message. While he was building mansions for them, that means while Jesus is building mansions for me, for you, that's how we have to receive it. They were to build characters after the divine similitude. So what's our job while we're waiting for Jesus? Character building. While he's building mansions. And brethren, let us take this seriously. Young people, you want to go to heaven? Yes, you do. So what do you do? Build character. And this character, character of Jesus. Let us have the spirit of Jesus because character is what we need to take. In uh, volume 5 of the Testimonies, 535, this is a long statement, but I, I got uh, the, the important part which says, we should know what we must do to be saved. And we know, uh, this is character building. We must meet the conditions laid down in the word of God or die in our sins. We must know what moral changes are essential to be made in our characters through the grace of Christ in order to be fitted for the mansions above. Our characters should be fitted. You know, when the, the doctrine of justification, sanctification, you know, you have uh, references in the Bible and testimony like, like this. The first, the justification, is our title to heaven. And the second, sanctification, the righteousness by which, which is imparted, is our fitness for heaven. So it's a process. And that's a big study. And I love this principle, brethren, because this is the sealing message. You know everything here I'm presenting to you? Sealing. To be among the 144,000, to receive the seal of God. That's the aim. But we're not there yet. We're still here. And the four angels are holding the four winds to make our calling and election sure. We studied that last Sabbath in detail. That's why here is the, the substance to build the character. These are the principles. We must be fitted. You know, in Revelation, there's a mistake here. It's, a, it's not four, it's 14. It says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And here is the people, and what, this is what we should do. Only those will enter heaven who in probationary time have formed a character that breeds a heavenly influence. The saint in heaven must first be a saint upon earth. So before you go to heaven, you must be a saint here first. What is it? Where do you begin? The habits of speech. Hey, that's where it begins. You know, that's a big principle. Jesus said, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And you know, the Bible says, the heart is desperately wicked. So what comes out of the mouth? Evil things. But Jesus promised, Blessed are the pure in heart, Matthew 5, 8, for they shall see God. So the process of the gospel is purification of heart by the blood of Jesus. So when we have the spirit of Christ in our hearts, what comes out of our mouth? The speech, pure like Jesus. Let us examine ourselves, brethren. Do we have the spirit of Christ? Let us invite the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, the Word of God to come into our hearts. That's the meaning. The habits of speech, the character of our actions put a mold upon us and that which we cultivate 
in our association with others in this life, others in this life, your classmates, your friends, your relatives, your neighbors, your church, everything. We are showing in this life, it says here, goes down into the grave with us and will be unchanged when we come up from the grave. So it's a lifetime. Many are deceiving themselves by thinking that the character will be transformed at the coming of Christ. Many think this way. Oh, I just come to the church no matter what. I just give my tithes and offerings. Praise the Lord. Sing. And when Christ comes, he will give me a, a, a new character. That is a deception of Satan. Many are deceiving themselves by thinking this. But there will be no conversion of heart at his appearing. Our defects of character must here be repented of, and through the grace of Christ, we must overcome them. When, 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 when? While probation shall last. Thank God. We are still here. We are still among the living ones. We still have probation. This is the place for fitting up for the family above. To be fitted for heaven. Character building. Okay. This is very important to be saints, you know. What is the example of Jesus? Okay. When he built in the speech. What's the example? If we have the spirit of Christ, this is what we read. Christ himself did not suppress one word of truth. He did not suppress one word of truth. But he spoke it always in love. Let's think about that. That's the spirit of Christ. When I speak the truth, let me watch. Do I have the spirit? Do I speak it in love? Or do I <laughs> hammer the truth about the head? No. Like a... No. Brethren, I tell you, this message... It really uh, uh, touched my heart. I hope it does yours. Because it is Jesus. I can see Jesus. I'm way, way too filthy. I'm still way behind. And that's what I feel. God, Lord, be merciful to me. And I hope we plead to have the spirit of Christ. When we have the truth, we speak it like Jesus did. Always in love. He exercised the greatest tact. Tact. You know what is tact? That's a big word. I do not have that myself too, either, you know. And thoughtful, kind attention in his intercourse with the people. He was thoughtful. He was kind. He was tactful, modest, you know, courteous, and all that. Which, if I see myself here, God, be merciful to me. So let's pray that the Lord will give us the spirit of Christ. He was never rude. So, you know what? I saw myself, of course, in time past, you know, rude. I was so rude. Especially if somebody step on my toes, toes, you know, shoes, or they revile me. Oh, immediately, I will. And I tell you, we're all like, he was never rude, never needlessly spoke a severe word. And you know, I, I say myself, I speak a lot of severe words. Never gave needless pain to a sensitive soul. He was watching how careful, tender, loving care, TLC, you know, hands, not just had put the gloves on the hand, you know, that's how Jesus was speaking. He did, he did not censure. Notice this. Censure means to, <laughs> to rebuke. And he did not censure human weakness. Do we? I censure human weakness. Oh, why don't you do this? He, Christ, if we have the spirit of Christ, we will not censure human weakness in others. Okay. He fearlessly denounced hypocrisy. Oh, he was not condoning any sin. 
hypocrisy, unbelief, and iniquity. So he was straight, cry aloud, you know, lift up thy voice like a trumpet with love, you know, and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. Christ was like that. But look, look at the way the Spirit of Christ had, says there, tears were in his voice as he uttered his scathing rebukes. Scathing means it's painful. It cuts. But tears, you know, this is the Spirit of Christ, the way we speak. And let us pray to the Lord. Look at this. It says in James chapter 3, verse 2, For in many things we offend all, in many things. If a man offend not in word, like Jesus, the same is a perfect man. And is able to also to bridle the whole body. So it's not only, it's here in the speech, and it carries on with your hands, the way you do everything. Perfect. So this is the Spirit of Christ. You know it says in Desire of Ages, because Jesus said, Be ye therefore perfect. Matthew 5.48. You know how the Spirit of Prophecy presents that to us, brethren? It says, God's ideal for his children, you and me, we're children of God, is higher than the highest human thought can reach. Be therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Notice this. This command is what? It's a promise. You know, promise. God promised that it is impossible for God to lie. Hebrews 3.18. That's why it says that the plan of redemption contemplates our complete recovery from the power of Satan. It's a promise. So may the Lord help us, brethren. Uh, here is what Jesus is doing. We have only a few, uh, few frames here. In testimonies uh, to ministers, page 18. And this is what I challenge you to, to examine yourself and ask the Lord to do it for you. The Lord Jesus is making experiments on human hearts, in you, in your heart, in my heart, through the exhibition of his mercy and abundant grace. We're saved by grace. We're saved by mercy of God. He is effecting transformations. That's a reform, change. So amazing that Satan, here is Satan, with all his triumphant boasting, with all his confederacy of evil united against God and the laws of his government, Satan, stands viewing them, them, the people of God, as a fortress impregnable to his sophistries and delusions. He cannot penetrate them, you know. They are to him an incomprehensible mystery. Why? And not only to Satan, notice this, the angels of God, hey, seraphim and cherubim, the powers commissioned to cooperate with human agencies look on with astonishment and joy. Why? They're also amazed, surprised, that fallen men, that's you and me, once children of wrath, that's before, are through the training of Christ, developing characters after the divine similitude. While Christ is building mansions for them, they were building this character after the divine similitude to be sons and daughters of God, to act an important part in the occupations and pleasures of heaven. Brethren, that's God's ideal for us. That's why Jesus is training us now if we accept the spirit of Christ. And we read in Romans, this is a mistake, it's uh, chapter 2, 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be it transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that perfect and acceptable, perfect will of God, it says here. So that to be transformed is the work of Jesus. And here is our last uh, frame, uh, mentioning 2 Corinthians 5.17. If any man be in Christ, that means if you have the spirit of Christ, if Christ dwells in you and he in, in us, Behold, it says there, he is a new creature. Be, all things are become new. All, all things are passed away. That means there's a change. What you are now, which is bad, may go away if you are in Christ. 
What is the explanation? Through the power of Christ. This is the power. The Spirit of Christ has a power. Through the power of Christ, men and women have broken the chains of sinful habit. They have renounced selfishness. The profane have become reverent. The drunken sober. The profligate pure. Souls that have borne the likeness of Satan have become transformed into the image of God. <clears throat> this change is in itself the miracle of miracles. A change wrought by the word. It is one of the deepest mysteries of the word. We cannot understand it. We can only believe by faith. As declared by the scriptures, it is, this is Colossians 1.17, 1.27, Christ in you, the hope of glory. How does the, uh, Christ in you, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, Christ in you, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that ye might be filled with the fullness of God, will be transformed, brethren. Why faith? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Wherefore, it says here, Hebrews 12, 1, we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which that so easily beset us, and let us run the race with patience, uh, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, who is he, the author and finisher of our faith. And then we know that when this is uh, Paul mentioning, he finished the course. He ran, he finished it. He said in 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. He did, not, he did not stop. He went to the end. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is light for, laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So let us finish our faith, brethren. That is the Spirit of Christ that we studied. May the Lord help us, is my prayer. Amen.